You're listening to Power Talk, Berkeley Electric Cooperative's official broadcast about the cooperative, our communities, and ways to use energy wisely. And now, let's join our hosts for today's episode. Good morning, Low Country. I'm Libby Rorig, uh, Director of Marketing and Communications for Berkeley Electric. I am joined this beautiful morning by Eddie Plowden, our Director of Energy Services at Berkeley Electric, and Mr. Mike Souter, owner and operator of Air Concept Solutions. That's Welcome, right. guys. That's right. Hey, Great to be here. here. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, guys. So, Eddie, you're a veteran. Uh, you've been on the show many a time. Yep, got my Power Talk cup, and mm-hmm. Mike being here the first time got we got him cup, his cup. So, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and today, you know, we want to talk about, um, you know, our relationship with contractors, how we help our members with our loan program, some energy tips. Um, you know, this is summertime; it's very hot right now. ACs are running like crazy, and you know, we're getting uh, higher bills from members. You know, how can we help? Help? How can they do some self help too? So let's talk through this. Yeah. And yeah. you know, Libby, um, you can see my gray hair here, <laughs> and uh, I've been around a while, thirty seven years. But Mike, you know, has got a little bit of gray I, also. I, I, I got um, no hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no hair. So we've been doing. Um, I've been doing this thirty seven years on the utility side helping members and then mike has been on the um, about, ac service side for about the same time yeah yeah, yeah. so, we're so like, mike tell us about yourself well um you know i started in the trade when i was really young when i was 18 and just loved it so stuck with it and then started doing more different aspects of the mm-hmm. trade and stuff and then eventually you know i got to the point when uh, i realized it wasn't just about H- hgac changing out units it was more about a whole house approach and trying to make sure that you're not just sizing units properly, but also making sure that you're, you're saving, you're Mm -hmm. saving on your energy bills. You know, when you start getting those people that are, have high energy bills and you're like, well, why? And 90% of the time, sometimes it's right at the AC. So, so I get stuck there and then I, uh, kind of stuck with it all these years, you know? So, you know, and I get to meet people like you and, and Mm -hmm. Eddie and, and it's great. I love it. I love it. I love what I do. Well, Mike, thanks for being here. I know you've helped out at, at my home. Um, oh, so, yeah, yeah that's we, right. we really yeah. appreciate it. You do a great job, not mm-hmm. only at my home, but for our members. So, yeah. um, so we, we love working with you guys. And as Eddie mentioned, we definitely are in the dog days of summer. I'm sure you guys are hopping. It's um, crazy. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. really hot out there. And, you know, in Berkeley Electric, we care about heating and cooling costs very much because it annually accounts for about half of our members' bills. So yeah. we, we our phones are definitely ringing mm-hmm. more when it's really hot or really cold. So we um, do what we can to help educate our members first and then um, help troubleshoot where we can. Um, so, Mike, what are some of the common problems you guys are seeing these days? Some of the issues, especially now that it's gotten hotter outside, mm-hmm. uh, we see that the AC units are struggling. They're just not maintaining. Sometimes it could be just a, a, a simple part that just needs to be replaced. Or it just could be, you know, educating the customer on how to properly take care of their unit. It could just be that it may just need to be cleaned, mm-hmm. you know, something simple. So um, we, we always like to go in and just try to educate our customers on how to, you know, maintain their systems and try to give them a heads up, you know, as far as if we see something that's going to uh, start to possibly fail. Mm-hmm. You know. and, and, I mean, I agree. That's kind of tips that we talk to our members every day about what can a member do every day. We want them to, um, you know, have the professional contractor come out to their home uh, twice per year to try to service the unit, make sure it's working properly. But there's things they can do during the year to try to make their unit work properly. Like they need to change out the filter. Yeah. Of course, we talk about a, um, a lower cost uh, fiberglass filter mm-hmm. um, yeah. that doesn't restrict airflow as as much because um, you yeah. know you can have duct leakage. Filters. Yeah, yeah, by the cheap filter, yeah, so you can have airflow and also not have um, as much duct leakage. <laughs> Um, yeah, we always t- it, tell them the first time what we go in is we I go right to the filter. I look at the filter, and sometimes they forget to change their filters, yeah. and we remind them when, hey, you get your electric bill monthly, change that filter. Make sure you're not using something that is too restrictive mm-hmm. uh, because it does make those units work harder and the electric bill higher. 
Yeah. You know, so. And those outdoor, outdoor units, you don't want to have, um, you know, grass growing up on it. Oh, but yeah. also you don't want to weed eat your uh, heating and air outside unit. You know, yeah. you could do damage out there to your refrigerant lines. Um, yeah, the make, electric, but, the, the low voltage yep. wires are right there exposed a lot of times. So you got to be careful when you're cutting around them and mm -hmm. keeping it clean, you know. So uh, a lot of times when we're there with, with a customer, we try to make them aware of these things uh, that Eddie's talking about. Uh, make sure the unit is, is properly cleaned and, you know, having a licensed professional, not just, you know, making sure they're certified and that they understand what they need to properly do Definitely. to uh, maintain their unit is very important. Yeah. Very important. And, you know, I'm a huge fan of the Ecobee smart thermostats that we have a program um, that the co-op offers, but it'll remind you when to change your air filter it or does. if there is yeah. something going on with your system or high humidity you know, it just, it's one less thing I've got to worry about. You know, yeah. I just let my thermostat We always me. recommend that program. That's such a great cr program for the customers. Uh, it also tells you uh, air quality. Mm -hmm. Now, the newer ones will yeah. tell you the air quality in the house. We had a customer the other day. She burned something on the stove, and the Echo Bee yeah. alerted her about the air quality in the house because it was just in smoke. Yeah. You know, and she called us up, and we were like, yeah, it's, everything's okay. But that's a good thing about these smart thermostats is they're looking ahead, and they're helping you, uh, you know, pay more attention, I would say, to, yeah. your, to your AC unit. And, you know, of course, um, the... The units also um, is as you can set back your temperature, you know, when you're away from the house, which is fantastic for mm -hmm. um, yeah. energy savings, you know, so you don't have to do anything and it'll set back. So Burke Electric Cooperative, you know, of course, we if a member's put in a, the thermostat themselves, we have the, the full value of that is going to go back to the member um, as, as far as a credit. But you got to get it installed. Um, you can actually do it yourself or. Um, hire a professional, um, you know, licensed contractor. Of course, we have, um, you know, two lists of contractors on our website. So, you know, use one of them as a, as a reference and also to maintain your unit on an ongoing basis. Um, and, of course, if it's really bad, um, you know, unit goes bad, then you need to use our loan program and our audits uh, to try yeah. to help you get a uh, unit replaced. Again, great programs um, to, uh, to have. I mean, I, I love to see the home advantage loan programs for the customers. You know, they can't afford something right out of the pocket. Mm -hmm. So you guys reaching out and helping them like that, it's just unbelievable. I mm -hmm. mean, some people don't even know. And then when I say, hey, you know, uh, BC has this program that can help you. And they're yeah. like, tell me more. You know? Yeah. And hopefully if it's enough of an upgrade that the um, note payment is offset by the savings that the member is experiencing in their home. And it is one of um, a variety of programs that Berkeley Electric offers. You know, we have a team of energy advisors looking out for our members all year, not just during the <laughs> summer. And, you know, we're monitoring accounts for spikes in usage uh, as part of our proactive high bill review. You know, it, Eddie, I'm sure you hear it all the time. You know, we'll, we find out from our billing department that somebody's using an unusually high amount of energy yeah. and mm -hmm. we give them a call and the member goes, this must, there must be a problem if the electric company is calling me, telling me I'm using too much energy. Yeah. yeah they don't mind us calling them for these very high bills. Um, and then, you know, Mike and some other the home advantage loan contractors are been partners with this yeah. and we'll contact the member. And then a lot of times we'll know exactly what the problem is. A lot of times it's that obviously heating and air, electric resistive heat running with a cooling system. Mm -hmm. And then Mike has been on a number of homes and a actually of, um, yeah. helped um, when there was a dangerous situation with wiring and with the contractor there has oh, been yeah. a great yeah, uh, I, I, ally, you know, with us helping our members. I, I can tell you after 36 years of doing this, uh, my joy now is actually when they call me and I get <laughs> Josh or Eddie say, hey, can you take a ride? And yeah. I'm like, anything to get out of the office to come <laughs> out and, and get out there and, and sit there and find out what the problem is and we'll work together as a team to try to help these customers, you know, lower that energy bill or get, give them more comfort. Yeah. You know, yeah, so definitely. I love that. I love that. So Berkeley Electric also uh -huh. offers energy audits as mm -hmm. part of the Home Advantage right. um, program. And, you know, as we mentioned, um, Home Advantage Loan Program offers on-bill financing to help with energy efficiency upgrades. And, 
again, the the idea is that the savings uh, offsets the cost of, of the loan. But, Mike, you're one of our approved HVAC contractors for the Home Advantage Loan Program. You know, what's it like working with um, Berkeley Electric and serving our members? I, I could tell you after all these years, uh, the most important thing is I enjoy, like, working with Josh and Bert and, and Loretta and, 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 and Eddie and stuff and be able to go out there. Um, you could just tell that they care mm-hmm. about their customers and trying to resolve that high electric bill that, you know, and, and to me that's that's for, so important that, mm-hmm. that you can see somebody actually puts the effort forward to care about their customers and, and try to help them resolve the problems and issues. So I love the program. The program is great. Uh, I'm all for it. I've always been for it. Uh, I've been with you guys for many, many years, and uh, I always see a benefit, you know, as far as helping other people and educating them. Yep. So it's a great <laughs> program, great partnership. So, And, Eddie, um, you know, we have a list of uh, approved <laughs> contractors from Ho- Home Advantage. Um, what are the things that you're looking for to for an HVAC company to get on the list? Um, the Home Advantage Loan Program is not just um, a check-off where you're changing out the unit. Uh, we are going out to the home and doing a, um, a pressure test of the home. We set up a fan and depressurize the house. We find the leaks in the home. We also... Blower door um, test. Yeah. It's a blower door test yeah. um, where we uh, find how the home is going to perform, you know, with the system, you know, in the home. Mm-hmm. Uh, meaning uh, we don't want the air that's conditioned in there to leak out. And, yeah. um, of course, you know... Micah that works this podcast hit, um, a lot with us is out today. Um, uh, he's got one of the most leaky homes I've ever seen, <laughs> oh, yeah. but he's done work South, to get South it better. Carolina. Some old yeah. Charleston homes. <laughs> old, old house. Um, <laughs> but what we're looking at for contractors uh, to be on a home advantage loan program, we were seeing a, a few gross on that, but this uh, contractor that can actually do a blower door test They've been going through the certification of a BPI, Building Performance Institute uh, training. They're a mechanical contractor. Um, They can also do uh, duct testing and, of course, their, um, you know, duct design and and, and sizing through main or J, um, heating and air conditioning sizing uh, standard. Definitely, Um, definitely. So we we have a a small um, group of um, eight or nine contractors currently. And which is great. You know, this group does, um, you know, focuses on our members on the 5%, you know, on bill financing. Mm-hmm. We see this growing um, next year and really in the next, um, you know, eight, eight, 10 years with um, rebates is going to be coming out in 2024 yeah. to help with um, um, changing out units, mm-hmm. rebates for changing. Out. And of course, there's Energy Star rebates right now. So. Yeah, I, I personally love the fact that you guys implicate the blower door. Um, you know, I went to school a long time ago with Eddie <laughs> for blower yes. door and infiltration and, and whole house approach. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I see is that people don't understand that if they have a leaky house, you know, and they're trying to keep it cool, they heat and humidity draw to that cold. So if we could use the blower door and implicate that pres- duct pressurization test and stuff like that, we could find those inf- infiltration issues, be able to resolve them mm-hmm. so that they can help lower their energy bills so they can help, you know, feel more comfortable. So that program in itself, uh, going out to somebody's house and doing a blower door, pres- duct pressurization test or whole house test is, is so important, especially here in a low country yeah. and us dealing mm-hmm. with humidity issues. You know, and it's just a crazy. It's just and, crazy. Yeah, and, and the, you know, what we do <clears throat> through this process of working with a contractor, we basically give the uh, guidelines of what needs to be done to make the home more tight. You know, it could be duct system. It could be tightening up an attic, um, you know, around a sink. Uh, different places where there is leakage in the house, not just changing out the HVAC system. And then we inspect, you know, at the the end afterwards. So um, I I think they're always going to see a good benefit to the program Mm -hmm. just based on that. We're not just out there changing out HVAC units. We're looking at the whole envelope. We're looking at the whole house. We're trying to resolve issues that they may not even know they have until mm-hmm. the blower door test has been done, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we're <clears throat> homeowners, we're used to investing in our property. A lot of times we think about resale value, though, but this is one of the few investments that you get a return on that investment Auto- almost automatically. immediately. Yeah. Yes. Automatically. And. You know, and you know, also we want to try to, you know, advise members about, um, you know, how they're cooling, heating, cooling their house. But, you know, right now cooling and we 
uh, definitely recommend, you know, 78 is a great setting for our members. Uh, but if you're running it cooler than that, really don't want to go below the 72 degrees. Right. Because below that, you can actually get into a situation where it's, it's actually not, it's cooler, but it's not uh, comfortable because the humidity can go up. Yeah, it draws it in um, faster, at a faster oh. rate, believe it or not. Interesting. Yeah. And so you can have, you know, <clears throat> problems with your home, your structure. You can have, you know, just, just issues with the home if you get down too, too low or try to run it too low. Um, yeah, so can, proper sizing of a unit is absolutely paramount <coughs> to definitely. comfort. Um, De- definitely. When you when you talk about uh, low calculations and making sure that it's sized properly for the house, it's very important for that. Um, one of the things that I always try to recommend to people is, you know, in their mindset, they don't feel comfortable. So the very first thing they do is they go to the thermostat and they turn it down. Yeah. Sometimes by turning it down too low, you're causing that high energy bill, but you're also causing, if you have a lot of infiltration Mm -hmm. to the outside, you're drawing that heat and humidity in faster and you're making the problem worse. Wow. So that's why it's very important, like with the Home home Advantage Loan Program, is to to have air sealing, to, Mm -hmm. to have that test, try to resolve those problems. I mean, and it could be as simple as, you know, here we call it low country, so... Hey, we dig mm-hmm. a foot down, we're going to hit water. Yep. So <clears throat> not just rely on maybe your HVAC unit, but maybe a whole house dehumidification system sure. may be needed. Uh, every house is different, <clears throat> so you have to take each problem as, as we see them. But, I mean, yeah. And even, you know, like water <clears throat> management from um, your home. Also make sure that your bulk moisture is not getting underneath your house. Yeah. You, know, that, <clears throat> you know, gutter systems, uh, make sure plastic is down. Um, you don't want any moisture trying to come up and, and fighting that heating and air system and adding to your load. So that's very, very important also. Yeah. Yeah. Air sealing, building tightness, um, you know, the, having that blower door test is just so important. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of times when I go into houses that they don't even know it's a humidity issue. And I know immediately, I mean, yeah. all the years I've been in the trade, I walk in, I see it's 68 degrees. And she says, I don't feel comfortable. And I'm like, what's the relative humidity? Yeah. You know, and how can we resolve this? Let's do a blow door test. Yeah. Let's find our infiltration. Let's fix these problems that you may not see right in front of your face. Yeah. And you're going to be more comfortable. <clears throat> yeah. And then, you know, working with members, you know, this time of year, we're, we've got uh, conditions that actually get up to 100 degrees. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Systems yeah. designed to be around 92 degrees as far as they're, you know, and they're going to run all the time once you get to above 92 degrees. It's just going to run 100% until it gets down below that. Um, and the things that really help <coughs> a member is proper sizing. Um, when it's running, even though the temperature can drift a little bit higher than your setting during these time periods, the humidity in the home should be dropping down uh, yeah. to make you comfortable. And then also you've <coughs> got the uh, movement of air when the, um, the fans in your room need to blow down in the mm-hmm. summertime. Mm-hmm. We talked about uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, <coughs> whatever. Just in the summertime, the, 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 fans in the room use them when you're in the room um, needs a blow on your skin so you can feel that humidity exactly. um, you know evaporating off your skin you get to feel cooler yeah um, in the winter time of course you want them to go up so you're not feeling that breeze yeah, um, yeah fan, fans are good to so help move if, the air and circulate the air throughout the house <clears throat> Um, typically, I would tell somebody you don't need it to be whipping. You just need a nice, movement. smooth movement. Mm-hmm. You know, turning it high doesn't make it colder because <laughs> it's not an AC unit. It's it's just moving air, but it, but making sure the air is not stagnant <clears throat> and sitting in those rooms, especially yeah. with high ceilings, yeah. it's always good to have that air circulation. Well, if you're just joining us, I'm Libby Rorig, Director of Marketing and Communications with Berkeley Electric Cooperative. Um, and joining me today is Eddie Plowden, Director of Energy Services at the Cooperative, and Mike Souter, uh, Owner Operator of Air Concept Solutions. So we're learning all about HVAC problems and um, <coughs> things to avoid, and how the co op might be able to help solve some of the problems with working with. Um, with Mike's crew. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we recommend our members have a licensed technician check their systems at least annually. I know I've moved to the twice a year rotation just because I've run into problems doing it just once a year. Mike, what are your technicians looking at during a <coughs> maintenance appointment? Well, a lot of times what I do is I try to break it down. I, I would say after, you know, 36 years being in trade, 
it's really four areas to be concerned about. One, of course, is airflow. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's why we call it air conditioning, because without proper airflow, nothing else is correct. So we look at the... You make sure the blower, indoor and outdoor blower motors are working. We uh, we check the coils, make sure they're cleaned. We look at duct sizing. Proper duct sizing is almost critical uh, to making sure you get uh, <clears throat> good cooling throughout the home. A, a good duct system will do that. Um, next, and I usually have them check anything that's mechanical, you know, like capacitors, contactors, relays. We look for burned or damaged or something that may have overheated. Uh, <clears throat> one of the very important thing is always have them when they're checking cooling is check Amtrol on the heat strips mm. to make sure that heat strips aren't running at the yeah. same time as cooling, causing a high electric bill. Um, biggest common problem we see uh, right now is drains. Mm-hmm. Drain mm-hmm. lines are either improperly piped or they're cl- clogged or they're dirty. You know, So our guys are out there looking at those drains and making sure they're good. And then, of course... The, the last but not least is refrigerant <laughs> pressures and temperatures and making sure that the system is uh, functioning properly, operating properly. And a lot of times we can tell by getting a good delta T between supply and return in the house, uh, getting our pressure readings, our SAT temps, uh, line temps, and, and so, so <clears throat> and so on. So, you know, these are like the four major things is airflow, mechanical, water, course for safety and then refrigerant should always be the last thing it shouldn't be the first thing that they're looking at yeah um so hopefully they're out there doing it i know they were doing it at your house so if they're not you know you could call me i'm the owner so yeah. you're like i know this guy <laughs> yeah, so, yeah i'd be more than welcome to help um you know that's the big thing is like when i go out with the team with with eddie and josh and them <clears throat> these are things that i'm trying to go over with them as well that are key important things that a customer needs to know and you know changing filters restriction of filters making sure you're not buying something too expensive it's it's just there's no you know people always say well my filter lasts 90 days my filter lasts 30 days there's no such thing i've realized that for years now a filter only lasts whatever environment you're putting it through Mm -hmm. so you don't want to be spending too much money on a filter that's too restrictive uh, because it may not even last as long as you may think it's yeah. lasting. So it just, you know, uh, hopefully the, <clears throat> my techs are out there looking at these four areas and, of course, educating the customer on, you know, what they're doing, what needs to be done, uh, what the customer could do to, to, to help themselves as mm-hmm. far as, you know, maintaining those systems. You know. I know the frustrating <clears throat> thing as a consumer with air filters is it's hard to find the cheap ones. Yeah. In my experience, you know, I've gone into Walmart or Target, and it's the really expensive ones mm. is the only ones that are yeah. in stock. I don't know if everybody's buying up the cheap ones, and I'm just late to the game. But well, generally, I go to Lowe's and buy like a three pack <clears throat> or a two pack. Yeah, I would always say, you know, if you're looking at a filter that has all the bells and whistles on it, that's probably not the filter you want. Yeah. Because it's just all it is is it's just thicker material. It's going to make the units work harder. The energy consumption is going to be higher. Uh, it's just it's going to cause more damage to your unit. Uh, the the big thing I always tell people is when you go to like Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, a lot of times Home Depot or Lowe's will try to push the the good filters. They put them right at eye level because <laughs> people like to buy an impulse. They see it. Oh, grab it that. Yeah. And then they usually try to keep the 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 thinner filters to the floor because they yeah. don't want to get the the employee from Lowe's to come over and get a filter for you. And then sometimes men, we like to have things we, we can't have. So they stick the good <laughs> filters with all the dogs and the cats and the birds all up high. And then we say, honey, go get the ladder. <laughs> we're, we're getting this one. But the key thing is, is just to understand is you don't need a heavy restrictive filter. Uh, Google, go online maybe and, and see if you can find them cheaper. You know, sometimes you go to like a, a filter.com or <clears> something <throat> and, okay. and be able to find filters that are not so restrictive that you can buy three or four in a pack mm-hmm. for the price of you see maybe one that yeah. had all the bells and whistles and just learn to learn, learn to understand your house, learn to understand the environment that filter is being put through mm-hmm. and to change that filter when it is needed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when it's dirty. When it's yeah. dirty. Check know. it. 
Yeah. So if you have lots of people <coughs> yeah. and lots of animals in your home, it may yeah. not last that yeah. long. Yeah. 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 So another thing you you mentioned was um uh you know technical term uh, see Mike talks Eddie um, <laughs> yeah. Delta T Delta know, T Delta I'm T. sorry I'm sorry um, I and <laughs> you know when you're even a homeowner can actually check if their unit's not working like properly yeah. oh. you know to do a temperature test um, if you have a thermometer that's in the normal home range. Um, to <coughs> make sure that it's, um, you know, 10 degrees or below between your return filter it's, it's six, and it's your actually, supply. Yeah, 16, to, 16 be, to 23, 23 being perfect, 16. But if you do get in a, a situation where you see a supply temp and a return temp that's only 10 degrees. Yeah, that's a problem. You, you, you've that's got a weird. problem there. Um, you know, but <clears throat> I always say. Make sure, though, it's not the instrument you're using either because I've seen customers will go out and get lasers and this, and then we walk in and we're like, well, that laser is saying this. I went, let's compare. You know, always just have an extra backup. But he's right. Uh, you know, sometimes I get technical. So um, <laughs> the biggest thing is people you say, well, Mike, you know, my AC is not cooling. Check the temperature that's coming out of your grill. Mm -hmm. and check the temperature mm -hmm. going into the return. And it should have, take those two temperatures and subtract them from each other. And it should be between a 15, 16, or perfect would be close to 23. Okay. It, it's going to range. It's going to fluctuate based on ambient temperatures in the house and as well as uh, temperatures. How hot are, it is. How outside. hot it is outside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times we get people that will say, well, you know, my thermostat won't go below 74 but the outdoor index might be a hundred and over 100 degrees yeah you know so it, i always say it's not a freezer it's a refrigerator <laughs> mm -hmm. and it could be you know 20 to tw to 25 to even sometimes 30 degree difference from what outside ambient temperatures and what yeah. inside so again people will say well i want my house colder and, you know, the, the importance is not to let that HVAC contract oversize that unit mm -hmm. because then, like Eddie was saying, is we could have problems with mildew and mold. It'd feel like a wet, damp cave. You can yeah. mm -hmm. have the structure in the house. Spring and fall is going to be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. So, so also, I, I always, yeah. as a person, you know, years, we, we understand that HVAC does what? It dehumidifies. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have months here in October, November, December, it may be cool outside. The AC is reading a temperature. It's not running, but yet we're still in low country. Yeah. We still yeah. have yeah. high humidity. Mm -hmm. So having sometimes even, you know, if, if they can't afford to have a, a whole house dehumidifier, maybe just going to Home Depot Lowe's and getting a good energy star dehumidifier and have it in the house and, and leave it between a 50 to 55 percent yeah. and making sure we're not exceeding that and as people understand you reduce the humidity in the house you're going to feel more comfortable mm -hmm. at a higher temperature even at say 78 degrees like like you guys are recommending i mean i personally keep my house between a 76 to 78 but my relative humidity in the house is less than 48 percent yeah so it feels cooler for me mm -hmm. so my ac is not running that much and all year I keep the comfort in my house continuous. I and mean, you're saving money. That That's the biggest <laughs> thing here is we, low country. It took me years, for, you know, I, I was in the military and I traveled. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I was in Florida and then I come here and everybody said, oh, it's low country. And I didn't understand what that meant. But even from Florida standards, you guys, wa your water table is way below. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, moisture is always a big factor here. Mm -hmm. and, and and that has a lot to do with people's comfort. Is, yeah. It's not able to feel that. So, <clears throat> well, we've just got about a minute left. Um, any final tips that we want to share with members about how to stay comfortable and save money? Uh, well, you know, uh, definitely work with Brokerage Cooperative um, on our website. We have our Home Advantage Loan Program. We can also offer audits for our members. <clears throat> Um, programs, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, contact us if you have a high bill, uh, if you have questions about your heating and air conditioning systems. You know, we are the experts to try to help for our members. But our website has got a huge amount of information that can help you with that. And we've only touched on a couple of the programs that we offer. So there's there's a lot more to help uh, keep your home energy efficient and, and get that comfort level that um, mm -hmm. is best for you. 
Well, thank you guys for yeah, um, appreciate it. Thank coming and spending some time with us and sharing good information. As Eddie said, there's more information at berkeleyelectric.coop. And be sure to follow us on our social media channels. Um, and don't miss Eddie's energy tips. Oh, yeah. That's uh, right. Very good. Very we good. Got the tips for you. <laughs> um, and he even has a special hurricane season series. So uh, those yeah. live on yep. our YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to check those out. Thank you so much for tuning in to Power Talk. This is the official broadcast of your local electric cooperative. You can catch up on past episodes on streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple, and iHeartRadio. Get a behind-the-scenes look at Berkeley Electric's YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you next time. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.